these days is a hell of a lot easier. Is it tempting for you? God, you know what? We kind of like knew the works of credit card fraud. The touch was me and the America's best girl who gives access to America Express, access to Saudi royal families, directors, film stars, Madonna, mm. hanging out with Tupac and Will Smith. Were you, were you like thinking, this could trigger something? They might actually think we are royalty. God, I actually thought I was royalty. How did you end up pulling off one of the most audacious diamond heists? There was never no faces. Everything was done over the phone. I told them that the prince wants to view the jewellery in private at the Dorchester. So were you telling them this is the Prince of Brunei? Yeah. Yeah, yeah the no, whole time yeah. and they fall in for the whole thing. Damn right. Wow. The taxi gets pulled. I'm in the back. Mate, I'm sweating. I'm thinking this is it. I'm f***ed. It's over. Zach, welcome to the show, mate. Thanks, thanks for having me, mate. Yeah, it's good to uh, good to have you down here, down in sunny Bournemouth. Thanks for making the effort. You're welcome, mate. Yeah, mate. Apart, oh. apart from the roundabouts, fucking <laughs> roundabouts everywhere. Oh, mate, <laughs> head, head spinning. Sure. <laughs> let's uh, let's roll all the way back, Zach. Where did you grow up, and how did you end up pulling off one of the most audacious diamond heists? So I'm from Manchester. I grew up uh, in Cheetah Mill. It's not far from Strange Ways. And um, where they have the Betty New Road, where they have all the knockoff stuff. <laughs> so I'm round the corner from there, born and bred, Manchester. Um, I spent most of my time there, apart from uh, when I was uh, in prison, which was uh, Brixton and Wandsworth down south. That would have been shocked the system, wouldn't it? Well, it was, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Proper prisons, mate. Yeah, mate. Proper, tw absolutely. 23 hour bangle. Yeah. Um, no electric, um, even. Um, to make a phone call you have to put an application yeah. but uh, I'm glad I've seen that side mm. you know when I went in uh, proper jail so so, so so just as you said you're from a Pakistani descent but yeah. you were born in born in England yeah yeah I, I what would, was your what was your route at school what was your route going out to school up to the age of 18 um, just well primary school secondary school secondary school when we got there that's when uh, we started to get into credit card fraud. Okay. So what sort uh, of age roughly were you doing? Eighteen. Okay. Eighteen. Yeah. So um, started college, and uh, I was doing a business and finance course, but it's led me into uh, credit card fraud. Um, I met up with uh, a mate of mine, and um, what, what we did was we decided uh, there was a foreign student that was with us uh, on the course, and we basically cloned his identity. Uh, in them days, you used to have like an NUS card and, yeah. and stuff. And uh, um, we redirected the post, made a bank account and redirected the post, got it sent to address that we had access to. And then we just went on a shopping spree. Um, and that, that was like, basically, it was like a drug from then on. Mm. Um, we just progressed and progressed. That led to the heist. So what, what, what year roughly we're talking here? We're talking 88, 88, 89. 88, 89 when you first started yeah, getting into it. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And it's probably easy to clone back then, right? Easier than no cameras, no CCTV, no technology yeah. was a lot less. Yeah, it, it was easy in some sense, yeah. but in other ways it was harder because you had to physically do certain yeah. things, you know. Um, but yeah, in some ways it was, especially CCTV, mm. uh, it was quite minimum. Mm. Uh, but in other ways it was difficult because nowadays some people do they'll do a fraud and just press a button transfer yeah. five million somewhere yeah. offshore account yeah. boom gone um but so so in some ways it was easier but it's harder as well mm. give me an example of cloning someone's identity back then and then going were you going shopping on shopping sprees going and buying tvs what were you buying yeah well the first time we did it it was just so we could just buy uh stuff that we was handing out to our friends and yeah. stuff it wasn't like we thought we're gonna go big. Mm. It was is an experiment. Mm. Let's see if we can get away with it. Um, and and we did. And then it become it become a drug. Um, further further it went down the line. Um, and you learn ropes from other people. You hear things. The thing is, when someone's doing like say other people are doing credit cards, they're not gonna let you in on how they do it because they want to keep it exclusive mm. to yourself. So it's uh, just a, a learning process. Mm. And uh, what happened was, the, the touch that happened with us was uh, that we met a girl, 
Yeah, I met a girl in a in a snooker hall. I spent a lot of my um, college life in snooker halls um, <laughs> instead of studying. <laughs> I was, le- you know, I was I was I was learning about real life in snooker yeah. halls, and uh, I met a girl in there, um, and she worked for American Express at the time, and um, obviously she didn't realise what we were up to. Um, we got talking. And um, I took her out a few times and then um, I just started to ask her information. And she'd give us a certain amount of information. And then we'd, we'd um, at that time, American Express was quite big. Mm. You know, um, you've got American Express Black, which is like people like Madonna and, yeah. you know. Is there a certain spend on that black, yeah, isn't yeah, there? Yeah, you've yeah, got to have yeah. a minimum spend. Yeah, or yeah, you, or you, you can, you've you probably got one. You've <laughs> never heard of one. Right. Never heard. But yeah, I'd say, you know, I mean, it's exclusive put yeah. it that way you'd have to be minimum earning six figures yeah so um well, that's so a lot of dough back then it was mm. it was i mean like it says we're talking you know early uh, we, 90s yeah that's yeah. right yeah. yeah so um by that time we'd we kind of like knew the works of credit card fraud but to get into the big league we needed american express and that's where the touch was uh she gave us certain information and what what we started to do was before right we need to get in, get in the big league, and we just do millionaires, you know. Um, so uh, we started to um, get into the Saudi royal family, um, uh, actors, directors from America. Um, we had uh, a guy called Aaron Spelling. He used to uh, direct uh, Beverly Hills 90102. Um, he's dead now, but he, he used to spend, on one black card, he used to spend half a million a month, yeah. A month. Yeah. So if if he had let's say fifty thousand disappeared on a on a shopping spree, he's not even gonna know. Yeah, clock that is yeah. it. And he probably doesn't even deal with his own, mm. you know, state statements and stuff. Um so as a test, that's what we did. You know, we'd give out a name and if they had American Express she she'd be able to give a certain amount of information, not everything because otherwise it'd come on top for her. Yeah. And then what we'd do is, because Mac Express is worldwide, mm. with the information from her, um, it's like a little jigsaw, then with the information that I had from her, then I'd ring up, say, uh, Brazil. And um, before any transactions were made, mm. we'd get that much information. Uh, just let's, let's say it was yourself. I, I may have your passport number, your national insurance number, everything at hand, spending patterns, uh, things that you won't even remember. And that's when, once we've gathered all that information, that's when we'd uh, uh, go on the spending spree. So how, so you'd gain the information to set up and open up a new card in that person's name. How would no, you do no, it? I don't no. want to get my head around this yeah. bit. So we wouldn't even have the credit card in hand. All we would have is all the details of the card, addresses, um, and what we do, everything was over the phone. So what we'd, we'd order, say... Uh, no, 50 car stereos and we'd we'd get it delivered to Manchester and uh, we'd get couriers because we'd, we don't want to show up ourselves yeah. that have face ID and stuff. Yeah. We'd get the courier to drop it off at a certain place, location, and then we'd get a taxi to that location, get it picked up and take it to us. So mm. there was never no faces. Mm. Everything was done over the phone. Mm. Um, so that's how it was. And so, how did that grow then? Because obviously you've gone from getting a student, getting him on board, getting his identity and going cloning that and then you're jumping up to the big league. Was, yeah, there, so not a, was there not a middle period? Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, there was a middle period and there's a period where we got caught as well. Yeah, okay. Um, so, so we're small time, uh, we're, learn, we're learning the ropes and uh, what's happened is um, on one of the cards, um, um, my, my mate is out shopping I'm round the corner he was in uh, Manchester Arndale getting some stuff and he, he got gripped I don't know why they were suspicious they seen someone suspicious yeah. and they grabbed him and uh, he got arrested and um, luckily for me um, well he did dob me in but because we weren't big time mm. you know it was it was first time offenders so just we slept on the wrist was it? yeah just got yeah. community service yeah. and uh, and that was it and then for, um but obviously it didn't stop us mm. because we, we already had the bug. So we were doing stuff like that, um, small credit cards. And then, uh, like like I said to you, the touch was meeting the America's mm. Best Girl, who um, even to this, even now, she's never been found. 
even after the highs, um, she's never been arrested. Do you know her name? Oh, I forgot it now, man. <laughs> I forgot it. I used to call her Darling. Darling, that'll do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, so, yeah, so that was a progression. Yeah. You're doing credit card fraud. Yeah. Touches, meet, meet the girl yeah. who gives us access to American Express, access to Saudi royal families, um, to directors, film stars. Madonna, mm. you know, um, I did Madonna's uh, brother's credit card. Um, her, she's Italian. Her brother's name was Christopher Ciccone. And uh, I mean, not only did we do a credit card, we knew where she lived. So one time we, we were over there in America and my mate decided to see if he could, you know, like see her. So he was, he was looking over the fence. And next thing you know, he got arrested. He was in the news of the world, mate. <laughs> Yeah, mate, front page. More, more like a peep than Tom. Yeah, 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 exactly. And that's documented, <laughs> so anyone, anyone wants to see, they can just Google it, you know. Um, but yeah, so um, then it was crazy, mate, honestly. We, we were, like, travelling to America. Uh, and one time we travelled to America, we were doing Rolexes, yeah. At that time we realised where if uh, watches held the value, especially yeah. with the paperwork and stuff. Yeah. So we'd, we'd go over to New York and get a couple of watches at a time. And uh, when we came, when we were coming back, we'd put them on, so we didn't have to pay the VAT. Yeah. Yeah. And what happened is, uh, like, we've gone on a Monday, we must have come back Wednesday, gone back out, and when we come back the second time, the same people that customers were working, they clocked the for they, they they thought we were doing drugs, yeah. so um, they. They, they pulled us and realised we had these watches, but we just had to pay custom on them, you know, to, to get them released. Yeah. They didn't know we were doing credit card mm. fraud. Uh, yeah, we were going Las Vegas when Las Vegas was, you know, was it even in? Yeah. You know, we were going Vegas when Bellagio wasn't even built. Yeah, that's right, know? okay. Yeah, Mid-90s. We, yeah, 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 we were watching Tyson fights. We were... Um, so what's that nice? Because I was at the Tyson fight, the Holyfield when he bit his ear off. I think that was ninety six, ninety seven. I think. Yeah, yeah. We were early nineties. And the 90s, MGM, I think it was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, he, he when he came out of prison, he had a residency at yeah, the MGM. Yeah. He was staying at the top. Um, we were hanging about, <laughs> hanging out with Tupac and Will Smith. You know, because as far as they're concerned, they're thinking these are just you know Arab royalty or yeah. kids, and uh, we, we were like hobnobbing with them. And this is all pre phones, and you know, obviously when you. When you're hobnobbing with these people, yeah. you're not going to start taking pictures because, yeah. as far as they're concerned, you're royalty. Yeah. So, yeah, it, it was absolutely uh, crazy, mate. Were, there, were those times when you were in Vegas living living the high life? Was they were the times you're thinking, hold on a minute, I can actually mingle with these big dogs everywhere, whether you're a top DJ or whether you're a massive face. Dodge. Were you were you like thinking this could trigger something? They might actually think we are royalty. Dodge, I actually thought I was royalty. <laughs> you know, I actually think that now sometimes. <laughs> you know, you know. I mean, when I'm when I'm out, <laughs> some people in Manchester. I'm just a normal guy, yeah. Yeah, but it's hard for me. Um, sometimes, honestly, I say to I've got mates who are who are rich, yeah, and I say to mate, you know what? Sometimes I think I'm you, Have you? <laughs> on a budget, <laughs> on a budget, <laughs> yeah, on a, on a voucher code yeah. or something. <laughs> so where was where was that point? When was it triggered? When you thought, you know what, I want to do this diamond heist. So in the nineties, now yeah. we're in the nineties, yeah. and. Um, we're making money, you know. What um, sort of ways? What sort of dough were you making at that time? Were they one-off hits everywhere? Yeah, yeah. Okay. It was, yeah, it was one-off hits. And don't forget, a lot of the times it was possession, mm. and you'd sell the possession, you know, whatever it was. You could sell it. It's hundred percent profit. Mm. So you, you you could sell it at a fraction, or you could sell it at a good value. Mm. Like I said to you, we, we stumbled upon Rolexes, yeah. realized that you'd get good money because we had jewelers in Manchester, yeah, that were taking them off us, and they were selling them on, yeah. you know. Because everything was the, the paperwork was with it, yeah. you know. They were they were stolen in one way, but not in another. Mm. If you know what I mean, you know. Uh, where a Rolex without the paperwork, it's not worth nothing, just like a car. Yeah. Um. So. Um, but actually, when you look back, then the internet wasn't about. Yes. You can't go right. hunting who's got the Rolex. Who's that? Well, you're bringing it over from New York or Vegas and flogging it to a load of fellows in Manchester. No one's going to see nothing. Absolutely. Yeah, okay. Absolutely, what yeah. sort of money What sort of, What sort sort of? of money were you taking on a watch? Can you remember? Let's say at that time, I don't know, um, um, Daytona, yeah. 10 grand, yeah. We'd probably get about six, seven for it. Yeah. They'd put it in the, you know, in the shop window, yeah. for t you know, so they're making, you know, so it was just, everyone was, and everyone was earning. Everyone was yeah. at it. And don't forget, yeah. the people that, um, 
whose credit cards were getting done, they were just getting reimbursed, yeah. you know, reimbursed. So um, if anything, it was the the insurance would probably go up, mm. you know, uh, I mean, over over time, mm. you know. So um, where else did you find it easy? Did you just find it easier going abroad, getting the watches, whack them on the wrist, have some fun, party, and then come back? Or did you find it easier going down to London or Manchester or Birmingham or around keeping it in this country? Yeah, no, uh, abroad, we, we, I mean, we'd go abroad. Um, we used to love going to um, America. Um, London was good. London was very good, mm. you know, with all the high-end shops. Birmingham, I'd only go there for a kebab, mate. Is <laughs> I mean, I don't know what you'd say in Birmingham <laughs> for. <laughs> I'd rather stay in Manchester. Yeah, sure. I've got, I've got friends, I've got family and friends in Birmingham. Mate, they need translators. Yeah. I get them on the phone, yeah, and I swear, I don't know what they're saying. <laughs> you know what I mean? That Birmingham, man, keep it out of the way. So just, just going back, the old credit card fraud, credit card, is that when they used to have the machine and used to go back over? Oh, or you just sign on the back nah, and copy yeah, a, and copy yeah, a signature. Yeah. How simple was they, that? They used to call they used to call them chuckers. Yeah, because yeah, it made that sound. Yeah, <coughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So what happened was, um, so I started to drive when I was about twenty, yeah, and couldn't even barely drive. Yeah, I decided what I did was I get a flipping Porsche. Yeah, <laughs> idiot can't drive. Yeah, I get a bloody Porsche. So what happened is I didn't want to pay for petrol, so. Then we'd have the card, obviously physically. So there was a, I'd go to a certain petrol station, and it was like they knew me. You know, how's it going, mate? You know, yeah. this and that, and and they were just using Whacking that truck. Yeah, yeah. And ne- you know, I swear for about two years, I never paid for yeah. petrol. You know, <laughs> and even that, you know, like uh, on the number plates, you could change the digits. So if you had black sellotape, like you could say change the E to an um, um, sorry, or O to an eight. Yeah. You know, an F to an E. Yeah. You know, um. And um, so you'd have it covered, mm. even if things come. But mm. yeah, mate, I didn't pay for petrol for about two, three years. Mm. I tell you, I wish I had them bloody cards now with yeah. the prices. <laughs> so, so you went from that card. Did they ever have to say you had to have a bit of ID with you, or was it literally a chuck? No. Or did you just have to sign the back and get away with it? Yeah, yeah, that's what it, it was. Was that simple? Yeah, it was. It but was. you had to be ballsy to go in there because there'd be people behind the counter clocking, going, "Hold on, yeah, they're at it." Yeah, yeah. Okay. But then if you're driving in with a Porsche, yeah, yeah. they're not going to think this guy's, you know. Can't Did, afford his petrol. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, which I could afford it, just didn't mm. want to pay for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where, where was the, where was the movement of what you were doing that you're thinking we can pull something massive off here? So, we're talking late nineties now. Mm. Um, we're thinking, right? We need to just do. A, <laughs> we're thinking we need to retire. Yeah, we need to give this game up and go uh, semi legit, as they say. So. Um, um, we're doing research. Uh, we're stuck in a, uh, a flat in Manchester, and we've come across um, Bijan Jewelers. I realised the Sultan of Brunei had acquired, uh, been there a few months before. So we thought there's a little bit of a link there. So uh, what we decided was again we did our research. We got numbers. I got the number of the palace in Brunei, um, and um, uh, through uh, uh, glossy magazines like Vanity Fair and Hello Magazine, we, we've done enough research to make, make some phone calls. The first few uh, phone calls were just initial contact, you know, and uh, made some... Phone f- calls to who? Uh, the jewellers. To in, the jewellers, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, what, just how, testing them, testing them with questions, see yeah, what response? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, 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 just a look, you know, we're looking at um, jewellery, um, we're, we're doing a wedding um, in London, and um, obviously the response was... Ching Ching. Yeah, of course. You know, and um, I mean, this uh, um, jewel is, is House of Bijan, he's called. He's still going now. Uh, I actually follow him on Instagram. I don't know if he follows me back. <laughs> we'll but, give him a shout out. What's yeah. his name? Uh, House of Bijan. House of Bijan. <laughs> um, he was sponsoring, I think, you know, Michael Jordan. Yeah. In his day, he was, you know, so, so wow. he's big in, time. Yeah, big time. What it was is I read that Mike Tyson went in and bought a fur coat in them days for 50 grand, mm. you know, so um, so it's not just jewellery, mm. it's fashion, clothing. And where are they based? Um, Rodeo Drive. Where's that? Uh, Beverly Hills. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So uh, made initial conversations and uh, and then left it um, and then went back to because at the same time we were on the phone to them, we were on the, on the phones to Australia, the bears in Australia and the jewelers in Singapore. Mm. 
Yeah. And we thought whoever's gonna uh, buy it, yeah, we'll go, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so um, from Australia, while we were on the phone to them, we ordered like ten pairs. Of, we reverted back to type, ordered ten pairs of Timberland for the lads, and some track seats. Would you believe? Yeah. <laughs> So later on, when uh, our charges were read out, it was a conspiracy to steal something like two point five to five million and ten pairs of Timberland <laughs> and, and, and some track suits. <laughs> Just throw that in there. Yeah, for the it's, it's five counts. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, they were very hospitable. And did you find? Did you find? Did you? What sort of names were you using? Were you using at that time? Yeah. So we're we, using British names, or we're we using? No, we were saying we were representing. Um, uh, Sultan of Brunei, Prince Mohammed, um, and we will speak. We obviously we like we'll try to speak in broken yeah. um, English. Yeah. You know, not with a man accent. No, no, no. no. <laughs> um, like we put up a look at the end day. They're on the other end of the phone. You can speak. You know, speak how you like. Yeah. Um, and um, we built up a rapport with them. Went back and forth. We never spoke about money, and um, so. At the time, uh, as we were doing it, we were thinking, right, to go big, to go extravagant, we're going to have to hire a layer jet. So um, what we said was, we'll, we'll put everything up for him. Yeah, we hired a layer jet. That was on a banker's credit card from Belgium. Just bro, just, just bear me there. You're putting up, so you're, you're going to hire a layer jet for who? For Bijan to bring up the bring because we 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 don't want to go to America to America. So you're we, going to say to Mr. Bijan, we will get you a Learjet to bring mm. you back to England or to England. Yeah, okay, yeah, okay, yeah. Because so you're making him feel like he's a million dollars. Yeah, and, okay. And to be honest with you, I don't think I ever directly spoke to Mr. Bijan. It was um, the managers and um, there's a manager rest. The the people that came over was a man and woman, and um, so we said, look. We're gonna lay out everything for you, yeah. Um, we we only want the best, you know. And um, never spoke about prices, and um, obviously at the same time they were thinking the commission of this is gonna be, you know. Yeah. And um, this went on for weeks, you know. It wasn't just like a overnight thing, mm. you know. And we even at one stage because we had we had all the details. We even had the the palaces number in Brunei, so. We, we'd give it to them and then we'd ring them back and say, because you know, you're not going to get through to the, you yeah. know, you can leave a message just yeah. like you should ring Prince Charles, yeah. you know. So, um, there's a load of gatekeepers in the world. Well, there yeah. you go, yeah. there you go. And uh, I remember at one time, because we give them, um, at that time, you had uh, pay as you go phones um, and we give them a, a pay as you go number and uh, one time they called us. And I ran in the kitchen and turned the extractor hood on and told him I was on a satellite, for, you know, I was on a helicopter, <laughs> you know. And seriously, you know, we was holed up, <laughs> holed up in Manchester, <laughs> ran in the kitchen, put the extractor hood on. Um, so, yeah, this went on for weeks. And um, um, like uh, I had a Goldstream Learjet, which was £150,000 um, to, to go over. This was just a, one, well, to pick them up yeah. and drop them off. Yeah. Um, and we arranged, uh, already arranged limousines. So when they, by this time, we've told them the wedding's going to be in uh, London and uh, we just want the best. Um, and I think it was over about 20 pieces in my uh, depositions. And um, I think the highest value, one item was half a million of four-sided uh, diamond, which is advertised on Instagram now so if you went on House of Bijan you'll see it mm. um, and um, those watches rings uh, ladies men's um, so um, what year what year was this 97 so this was 97 yeah. you phoned them up and gone I'm going to fly you over here bring all the diamonds bring all the watches land in London everything's going to be taken care of and everything's going to be taken care of and they fell for it absolutely wow yeah so what was the point when you were on the phone to them and you put the phone down and gone, I think we've cracked this? Well, to be honest with you, even while they were on the plane coming over, you know, because don't forget, we don't know exactly what's in the parcel. Yeah. So, t and then um, the problem we had was when, when they landed, we started to play it by ear. Like, how are we going to get the jewellery off him without being violent? Yeah. Because once you um, start going down that road, yeah, you're, you're looking at double figures. Yeah. So um, when they've got to London, 
uh, and we're we're holed up in Manchester. By this time, we're shattered. Yeah, yeah to the weeks of weeks of phone calls and stuff and excitement, and uh, we're thinking. We're that lazy now. We're thinking, you know, what? we don't really want to travel to London. Yeah. You know, let's try and get them up to Manchester. <laughs> so I, I've ended up, I've got this idea. I know I'll ring up Manchester United and saying that I'm representing the Salt of Brunei and we, we want a box. So if you Google famous um, Man United football fans, uh, Salt of Brunei comes up, but it was actually me <laughs> making that phone call. So. Um, <laughs> So yeah, so we thought right, okay, no, um, and then then it clicked. Uh, one of my best friends, who over the years had been in on us on doing stuff, going abroad, going to Vegas. Yeah. So he knew, you know, but he'd 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 moved to Slough. Yeah. His mum probably thought I need to get him away from this fucking yeah. idiot. <laughs> yeah, you know I mean, God knows what these are up to. So he's moved to Slough and he's studying now. And I thought, I know, I'll ring him up. Yeah, because if you're gonna get someone. To, you're gonna trust someone with this parcel, yeah. It's gonna be someone who, yeah. who doesn't get it and and does one, and yeah. then you know um, you're gonna have another problem. Yeah. So, but what I did was I didn't want to scare him off, so I thought, right, I'm not gonna obviously tell him how big we've done it because when over the years he was with us when we were doing Rolexes and whatnot, you know. But this was this was massive, yeah. you know. Um, so I said to him, look, dress up smart. You're gonna get picked up. And um, so um, that was a bare minimum. I told him. So he's met up at. He's gone to the airport. He's been picked up in seven. The seven li seven li limousines. He's in the middle of them, and we've hired a SAS bodyguard. Going back before that, when they've come over, there's a limousine waiting for him. Flowers. And what in London? At Heathrow. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think it's Luton. Right. Um, there's flowers waiting for him for the lady. Um, the hotel's all comped, so um, they, they're relaxed, you know. It's obviously Learjet, limousine, flowers, the little, little details, yeah. hotel. And, and no one's, no one's, they're not actually physically met anyone, Yeah, you know. It's all over the phone, yeah. we're speaking to them. Um, so, you know, they've had a great night probably. Um, next day, he's been picked up seven, seven limousines. I've hired a SAS bodyguard. Yeah, and they've gone to the. They were staying at the Sheraton, so I made them go to the Sheraton. And um, at the same time, I've told them that the prince wants to view the jewelry in private at the Dorchester. I think I don't know if he owned it at the time, but that's what yeah. that's where he used to stay. So, so were you telling them this is the Prince of Brunei? Yeah, yeah, yeah the that, whole time, yeah. and they fooled him for the whole thing. Damn right! Wow, damn right! So, Did they have anyone with them? Was it just a girl? Did they have security with them? No, no. Nothing? No, no. And not only that, going back, uh, when they've landed, um, I've told them not to declare the jewellery because you didn't want to pay the, yeah. the VAT. Yeah. So that's why it's disputed. It's uh, it's $2.5 million to $5 million yeah. at the time in 97, which lot. is equivalent to what? Probably your bank account now. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, they've not declared it. So I'm thinking, I'm already thinking ahead. I'm thinking if the, if this blows up and goes to court, we can fight it yeah. and say, what jewellery, what's the proof? Yeah. Um, so he's parked up, they've come round, imagine it, one limousine, two, three, four, five, six, seven. <laughs> you know, it's something out of uh, yeah. a film. A movie, yeah. Yeah, well, it is a film, yeah. to us it is a film, yeah. you know. So um, they parked up outside and... Um, the SES bodyguard's gone over, told him, told my mate to tell him, you know, to get a parcel. Now, in in court, in uh, in their court papers, they said the SES bodyguard snatched it off him, which he didn't. Yeah. He's doing his job. Why would he snatch it? He went in with it. You're just paying no, him to no, be there. No, okay. no, no. I mean, there's room. There's been rumours over the years that it was um, uh, a Manchester gangster who was in with us. Um, a big meathead who, mm. but he wasn't, it was mm. an SES bodyguard. And he's got the parcel, passed it to my mate, who's cool as a cucumber, because he doesn't realise, yeah. you know, how big this is. And uh, so I said to him, what's going on? And he says, well, we're parked up. So I said to him, tell the chauffeur to drive off. As he's driven off, he's on the phone to me, and what's happened is his batteries died, right? So what does he do? He borrows the chauffeur's phone 
and rings me. So uh, that's a link now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're getting a link. And you where know. were you at the time? I was in Manchester, I told you. I'm in the... <laughs> so you're just orchestrating it from up, up yeah, north? Yeah, 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 yeah. Who's, who's in your little firm? Those... How many people in your little firm? Because you keep saying we, we, we. Who was in the, how many people in that little firm you had on this On this, on this job? Yeah. Those, those six, let's say. Okay. Yeah. And then um, you had the prince. You had the, you had a guy who got caught with the prince, red-handed. Um, you had... Um, you said you had the prince. Was he dressed up as a prince? Did you dress him up? Yeah, well, I didn't dress him up myself. No, no, no. But was he yeah, all dressed up in the... I, yeah, yeah he, he probably borrowed his uh, dad's uh, <laughs> you know, Sinbad clothes or whatever. <laughs> so, yeah, he was looking smart, yeah. put it this way. Yeah. yeah. He looked smart enough to fool them. To fool, I was going to say. Yeah. So then what happened at that moment then? So you, they've handed over the parcel. They're stuck. They're, they're in the Dorchester. Yeah, yeah. No, no, they're not in the... They're the sheriff's in. Right. We've told them we're going to the Dorchester. Okay. The SS bodyguard stood with them. Fleet, my uh, mate drives off. Well, tells the chauffeur to drive off. Yeah. As they've driven off, what's happened is they've got found a corner and they... Sh One thing he's done is the phone call. Yeah. That was a link mm. later on. And the se second touch that's happened, the chauffeur, yeah, has uh, got a bladder problem, right? So he needs to go and have a, a yeah. piss, right? So I'm on the phone to him. I go, what's going on? And he goes, uh, the chauffeur's gone for a piss. And I go, what are you doing? He goes, I'm in the back of the limo. I go, get the fucking hell out there. He's gone. Caught the tube home. Boom. Disappeared. Jewelry gone, never to be found ever again. My God. Next day, he I made him catch a train to Leeds, not Manchester to Leeds. Met him, grabbed grabbed the parcel off him, said to him, "Listen, you hold tight, yeah, because if anyone's gonna get a knock on the door, it'll be you first. Yeah. And uh, he's he's gone back, and 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 that's it. So I've I thought right, you know, this is this is this is big. So you always got to think of the worst. So. My biggest concern was to put the put the tom down, the jeweler. Uh, I've got that put down and um, put down. Yeah. Hidden. Yeah. 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 And um, so, what's happened is they started to do surveillance. They started to watch us. They've got a phone link, so they know you know some something's happened, and it's from Manchester. And the other thing that's happened is, my mother told you about the, when I said I was on the phone mm. uh, with the extractor hood. Yeah. That phone was bought in uh, Manchester, in Woolworths. Mm. Remember, yeah. Woolworths, me and you Woolies, remember? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh, the old pick and mix. Yeah, that's pick and it. Mix. Yeah. <laughs> so that was bought round the corner from where I live. Yeah. Yeah. And I told the lad, the one who got caught red-handed, the same lad, I said to him, when you buy- Who got caught red-handed? Uh, one of my uh, co-defendants. I'm gonna bring. Okay. Bring, yeah. All right. Yeah. So what's happened? He's, he's the snitch, basically. Okay. So what's happened is they've got footage of this Asian lad walking in Woolworths buying the phone. Okay. They kept the because it was cheetah mill, and they used they kept the footage for three months. So they, you've got two links: phone call from the chauffeur's phone, yeah. and then you've got the phone that's bought in Manchester. So now they know these 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 lads, you know, situated in Manchester. So what they started to do was follow us all. Did you know you were getting clocked? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did yeah. how long was it when when the jewellery was nicked, taken up north to you? How long was it when you were like something's on top here? I'd say a few weeks. Okay, so you were fine weeks. for a couple of weeks, but you knew yeah, something was yeah, building. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and what were you sensing? What was the feeling you knew something was building? It's just that, you know, you watch, look, I'm the type of guy who's always looking over my back anyway. Mm. So it was a norm to me, you know. But you have to always assume the worst. Mm. And that way you, you know, you're one step ahead. Yeah, yeah. Um, so this is, um, so the following is, I remember those, because it's, it's winter, it's, it's bloody freezing up north, as you know. Um there was a van parked a few doors away from my house and we'd bang on the door or order the pizzas to the yeah. to the van. So it was a bit of a cat and mouse, yeah. you know. And uh, so what happens is, bang, 14 houses get raided, yeah. Um, Prince, the snitch, right? The snitch, right? So when he gets raided, he, he lived around the corner from there. What, what happens when he gets raided, when this crime happened, 
it was in the Daily Mirror, I think. It was uh, the headline was Sultan of Sting. Yeah, and it had pictures of limos and you know, like a James Bond character who's done this. And uh, it was in the top ten scams of all time at mm. that time. You had Brinks Mark mm. was number one, and we were in the middle somewhere. Mm. And um, he's got that bloody article upstairs in the attic. He's got in his own house. In his own house. You're joking me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, he's got that article, and he's got his court, which was one piece that was only uh, a watch, which was hundred hundred grand which was found. So he's been caught red-handed. Straight away, him and the prince, bang, Brixton. They're on remand. We're out. Did your house get knocked in? Those 14 houses, one of them your houses? <laughs> yeah. It was? Yeah. Um, no, yeah. Uh, yeah, 14 houses. Yeah. And uh, we all get nicked. Mm. Sorry, we all got nicked. And uh, they got they got put on remand because yeah. they had evidence on yeah. them. We got, we got let out after a few days. We were interrogating us got let out and um, they're, they're in Brixton and we're getting word back that they say listen no money in the world mm. is gonna satisfy us we we want out well, especially uh, the guy who got caught with the jewellery the prince himself to be fair he was quite cool um, so we're getting word back we were trying to negotiate so listen you know why don't you just put your hands up that way you'll save the others us mm. And, you know, you'll obviously get looked after. When you come out. Yeah, but he, he wasn't having any of it. Mm. You know, people change, people change. If you're, put on, if you're put on the spot, people will change. People will change, go, yeah, I'll do you a favour, I'll take, I'll take the hit. Bam. A lot of people just go, no, I'm not taking the hit. No, absolutely. Yeah. And yeah. the thing is, Dodge, yeah, we're talking, we're not talking big jail. Mm. We're talking a couple of years, mm. yeah. You know, it was a white collar crime. Yeah, yeah, there was no violence. Yeah, yeah. we're not talking armed robbery where you're going to do thirty years. Mm. You know, so it was what it was. So I thought, right, okay, um, I'm going to have to hold my hands up because it's going to be a cut for defence. Yeah, you're going to blame me. I'm going to blame you, and we're all going to get you know sent down. So um, I just held my hands up. Uh, we went in and said, look, yeah. Um, we went to well so we thought should we run a trial so this is where we were thinking what jewellery you know what proof there's jewellery but because it was all over the papers it was international you had the Sultan of Brunei you had a load of different countries Singapore Australia if you run a trial it was getting political and um, at that time I, I acquired uh, Jonathan Jonathan Goldberg QC mm. he was top five QC at the time. He represented Kenneth Noy. Mm. Um, so um, we held our hands up and uh, we got sentenced in Kingston Crown Court. I got three and a half years as a ringleader. There was me and my Cody, the two lads, the prince, he did six months on a man. He got released straight away. The snitch obviously walked. He did five, six months. He got released. On the day we went down, they got out and... Um, so uh, yeah, we were remanded, and uh, so yeah, we were, we were remanded for six months, I think. And then, sorry, what happened was, I got out on uh, bail. In between, because my daughter was born in ninety eight. Mm. Yeah, so I got out. Uh, I remember my bail; they they really messed about because uh, my uncle, who, who's an accountant, was putting his house down. It's like half a million pound house mm. we're talking to eight years ago mm. and they just messed him they had him in there for five hours but um eventually i got the bill i had to surrender my passport because they thought i was going to get off Do a runner, yeah. um, okay. i had to sign on every day mm. um so it was, it was proper strict and then um then when i went back that's when we went i was remanded for six months got out sentence then i went to wandsworth which was uh, Wandsworth's another story. Mm. Oh my days! Mm. I remember at night in Wandsworth, you'd hear like uh, screaming and all yeah. sorts. Yeah. yeah, you'd get you know the the heavy mob. Mm. So if you was a trouble causer or a drug dealer or whatever mm. inside, they'd, they'd steam into you and, mm. and give it to you. Mm. You know what I mean? You could be found hang. Mm. Uh, I remember when we when we got out, the jail got closed down. The call they a barbaric regime. Mm. Yeah. It was a proper Victorian old, yeah. you know, those those rats in there the size of cats. Mm. But, you know, I'm glad I've seen that. 
because I, I never went back because mm. I thought I never you know like these days you hear about jails with playstation showers yeah. this stuff like a bloody hotel yeah. I know lads who prefer prefer being they make more money inside yeah. you know getting parcels thrown over yeah. and stuff than, than being on the out yeah what was that moment like when your mate from Slough went down, didn't have a clue, drove up, met you? What was that moment like when you opened up and you saw the jewellery? What was in there? Mate, all I'm saying is, thank fuck the curtains were done. Because <laughs> it was like Aladdin's cave. You had different colours, rubies, sapphires. It was... <sighs> it was all fucking real, mate. Unreal, you know. Um been talking about it for the last 20 odd mm. years and i don't do it justice but it was fucking unreal mm. um the clarity the the vvs's and you know he didn't disappoint mr bijan i give him that give him a shout out to mr yeah, bijan yeah the fact that he's still going is you know testament yeah. to to him did you know how much it was all worth in there. When you were cutting the deal, getting them over on the lead yet, were you like, I know they're bringing this, 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 and this, or were they just bringing a past of goodies? No, we knew it was going to be into the millions, Yeah, you know, because it's for the souls of the Brunei. We knew it wasn't, it wasn't going to be like a Mickey Mouse, you know. Mm. You know, you're arranging lead jets, limousines, the full works, and, and they know this, mm. you know. At the same time, they're thinking, this is going to set us up for... Mm. For, for for a while, you know, especially the ones who were we were dealing with the commission they were gonna, mm. you know, Bijan himself maybe, you know, you know, I don't know how much he knew at the time because I didn't actually speak to him mm. direct. Mm. What did you do the moment you got it? How many men were involved? By that time, did you have a, if you had a divvy up, how many men did you have to have a divvy up with? Well, it would have been four. Four men. Yeah. How did you divvy it up? What well, did be, you take? <laughs> Mate, I can't remember. Um, no, well, you've got to remember that the lad that got caught, he got caught with one piece. So he, so that's under a G watch? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and then you had uh, the prince. And, uh, what did the prince take? Well, he didn't take nothing in there because at that time, <laughs> no, it, really, it was because it was hot. Yeah. You know, we had to put it down. Yeah. Um, yeah. So he didn't take nothing at the time because um, I, I told him just hold tight because I thought if, you know, if he gets caught, he's gonna get a tug. He'll yeah, get caught he, with it. Yeah, okay. Yeah. What did you take? Oh, mate. Honestly, it was just a few bits and bobs. Go on. <laughs> How much? All right. I'll tell you what. Yeah. I've got a story about the biggest piece. Go on. Right. Yeah. So, um, while I'm on Romania, yeah. yeah so, I'm, I'm negotiating with someone, yeah, and he wants to see the biggest piece, yeah. Um, and uh, I remember, I thought I'm gonna have to show it myself. Because again, how do I give it to someone? And you know, if he does a runner, mm. then I'm done for. Mm. So I put it on, under my jacket. We're in a taxi, we're going through Manchester city centre, where the MEN arena is, you know, where the bomb went yeah, off. Yeah. And um, next thing you know, the taxi gets pulled, I'm in the back, mate, I'm sweating. <laughs> I'm thinking, this is it, I'm fucked, it's over. <laughs> and uh, the plod looks, 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 looks at me. And goes, sorry, sir. We just ta checking his taxi plate. <laughs> Result, mate, mate. Yeah. So, so yeah, I took a lot of risk. The thing is, you know, when you're young, you mm. you just think. How old? How old are you in these late nineties? Then we're talking late twenties, thirties. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. Not thirties. Not I'd say yeah, late twenties, but young twenties in the sense that. We spent most of the time living with the family. You yeah. know, like we're not really apart from doing what we did. Yeah. We've not really, you know, had it hard yeah. in a sense. Well, it sounds like you're a bunch of chances. Yeah, Even yeah, there you yeah. Go, basically, yeah. it doesn't sound like a diamond heist. It sounds like chancy and turned into a con, turned into you pick it up, you pick it up, orchestrating from up north, and all of a sudden you're getting this load of things landing on your on your lap. You're thinking, well, that was easy. Yeah, yeah. What yeah. am I going to do with it now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, to a certain extent. Yeah. But at the same time, we, we, because we've been doing it for years. Yeah. You know, um, it's a bit of both, really. Yeah, it was a bit of both. But I'm, I, I want to know why you didn't make the effort after teeing all this up to come down from Manchester to meet him at Luton or Heathrow, wherever they are, Mate, to go, hold on a minute, let me orchestrate listen, it from down here. How long here. has it took you to, for me to get down here? Yeah. yeah? I don't like venturing out of yeah. Manchester. <laughs> Seriously. You know what I mean? We like it up north. Yeah. Um, it's, just, it's just the Mate, way it ballsy. was. Mate, ballsy. But did you find as you're going along that you're making these phone calls and you're asking the right questions to get the right answers back to go, hold on a minute, we're actually onto something here. They're actually falling for this quite easily. 
Did it make you think about doing other things in that time period? Well, we was we was gonna. Yeah. It, it's just a case of he he came through. But like I said, we were on the phone to a jeweler in uh, um, where was it? Singapore and Australia. The Singapore, to be fair, he was he was a bit more clued Sharper, up. Was yeah, it? Okay. yeah. So he got to stay there for you know what I mean. Leave him for, on the phone to Australia. So it was just um, when. Bijan, when we realised this guy is big, yeah, you know, you got Tyson, Jordan, yeah. you know, shopping. You couldn't just walk in, you know, you'd have to make an appointment. Appointments, that's right. Yeah, yeah. So, what was your what was your movements when you got the jewellery? Where did you stash it? Man, what are you, the police? No, I want to know. I'm intrigued. Well, we, we got it right. Right. I want. I'm intrigued. This is I want to know. I want to know. Right. Okay. What, what happened? Yeah. Did, 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 this is right. twenty this years is, ago. So this, it's all gone. You've yeah. done your time. Th this is exclusive for you. Yeah. yeah. I had a, I had a jewelers that I knew. Yeah. I got him to put it down. Yeah. So um, and then obviously he had to get compensated later on. Mm. So and think about it. A jeweler puts jewelry down. Mm. No one's gonna. No think. one's gonna give him exactly. Yeah, of course. Yeah. There you go. There's your. There exclusive. we go. There we go. Yeah. What happened when you? got your sentence what did you get in the end um three and a half years three and a half and you did what 18 months yeah yeah and what about the other three lads four lads well the two got out yeah um, and there was me um as a ringleader and my mate um he had previous so um we both got similar sentences mm. but he was on license for something else mm. so he he had to do the, the license um and uh, yeah so m most of my sentence i should have got cat deed pretty much straight away yeah but no, they wanted to teach us a, teach us what a did lesson. What you in? What category? I was in, well, I was in Brixton and Wandsworth, yeah. you know. Um, I should have been in Ford or, yeah. you know, Sudbury, where you get uh, you get let out. Yeah. Um, but to be honest with you, I'm glad it, the way it happened, mm. you know. And what was that feeling like for you, that moment you're going, my God, we're having some fun here, we're cloning, we're earning money, this is easy, there's, there's not many cameras about, we're, we're being ballsy mm. and taking risks and stuff, but then going, I've just been clobbered. I'm actually going to have to do three and a half years. I'll do 18 months. What was that experience like for you going into a Brixton and a Wands are for tough prisons, right? Oh, yeah. For absolutely. you as a 30-year-old, as a what did you what did you notice when you went into that prison for you personally? Well, first of all, what I noticed was because it was in the papers, we were like celebrities in a sense, yeah? You know, everyone wanted to talk to us about it. Uh, even, even the guards, you know. And um, the thing is, in jail, you're going to get trouble i.e. if you, you're into drugs or yeah. you're selling it, yeah? yeah? We weren't into that anyway. Yeah. So we just, you know, I was going to say kept our head down, but mm. we didn't get out of the bloody cell anyway. Yeah. Uh, but I've seen some, one or two things. I've seen some yardies go at it, a fight in the in the, in the the yard. And I think one of them, what he did was he, he got a jam jar, he smashed it, put sellotape around it, right. he used, yeah. yeah. And, um, yeah, so heard and seen things mm. that were, like, pretty scary. Mm. Did you notice any racism back then in the prisons? Um, you know what? I'm a big football fan, yeah, mm. so it's more football banter, yeah. yeah. If anyone said something to me, I'd say it, but, you know, providing uh, he wasn't stood straight in front of me and he was six <laughs> foot six, you know, you'd get lit back yeah. up, man. I'm not taking no yeah. shit off you. I'm not violent, but, yeah. you know, I, I've got a fucking lip on me, yeah. you know. So uh, at that time, when we were locked up, it was... Um, 99 uh, the treble oh, season for united so yeah. champions league final wasn't it mate i've got a story about that i'm in brixton <laughs> did you get to watch it did i thought no no so <laughs> so i'm in brixton right i've got radio five on yeah, yeah. it's the 90th minute the doors are going you got west ham spurs <laughs> arsenal banging the doors yeah then you mank bastards <laughs> and this and that yeah and i'm just about to switch the radio off and it's a goal mm -hmm. sherry goo <laughs> Oh, mate, yeah. I tell you now, yeah, I remember the next day going down for my breakfast, yeah, I felt six foot six. Yeah. Oh, it was un unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Seriously, that, I'll never forget it. Um, I mean, can you believe it? The treble, I was locked up. Mm. The last game I seen, I'll never forget, was uh, semi-final gigs mm. when he did that amazing oh, yeah. run. Oh, yeah, against Arsenal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the last game I seen. And um, I mean, I'm a season ticket holder, yeah. and my mates they they were they were in the fi they were at the final. Mm. You know, I remember them. They, they actually <laughs> they ended up uh, lucky twats. They've ended up staying at the same hotel yeah. as uh, United. And I don't know if you remember, but it was it was a gay gay hotel, and they they were there with Sherry because 
Keno, yeah. uh, Roy Keane was yeah. suspended, yeah. Um, and they were, they were like round them. I remember seeing the pictures. I was like, man, can you believe it? I missed the treble, but I'll never forget that. What was your What was your movements when you come out of Nick? You're like, I'm not getting back to this, or were you like, hold on a minute, that was easy money, that's worth doing eighteen months for. Right, I come out of prison, right? Mm. So I'm thinking, right, I'm gonna keep my head down. You know, look, what it was is. I didn't want to disappoint my parents, you know. My dad was a working class guy, worked all his life, come over in the 60s, you know. He was a gentle soul. Um, I lost him over 10 years ago. And uh, I just don't want to, I just thought, nah, you know, because I've known of people, of friends who've lost their, their parents or siblings while they've been in Nick and they brought them to the funeral handcuff. I didn't want to be that person. Yeah. Uh, I had that in mind. I had a daughter. That was born. That luckily I get got to see her born, and then I got locked up. And I remember getting her first picture when I was in. And it was it wasn't long, but just the difference from mm. being a little baby to just a little bit, you know, being on her feet. And I thought, man, some some things you just don't want to miss. Yeah. Um. So I've come out, and uh, what's happened is uh, I get approached by Channel Four, and I thought it was a I thought it was a wind up. So I thought, you know. You know, someone's, someone's they're, doing, they're doing an undercover on yeah, you yeah yeah <laughs> yeah so I remember getting my solicitor involved John Black yeah. and um, we met up in Manchester and they said look we want to do we want to sign you we want to do a, a documentary it was called The Art of Crime it was out in Millennium mm. and uh, they says uh, we're going to sign you on a two year retainer we're going to do the documentary I'm going to make a film the, 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 this is what we'll give you and I'm thinking Okay, then what's going on here? You mm. know what I mean? He's only heard of this. Yeah. You know? So it's right, fine, okay. We had to assign. Yeah. So they did the documentary, came out. Uh, there was four documentaries, and mine got the biggest views. This is pre internet and stuff. Got like three million views. Mm. At that time, there's only five channels. Um, so that happens. So after two years, no, nothing happened. They didn't make the film. So again, cracking on. Um, I get approached by uh, another publishing company in Manchester and they sign me on a retainer to do the film. So I'm like, thinking, every couple of years, something's popping up. Um, they didn't make the film, get approached. It was a TV company now, this time. They want me be to be in a TV series. It was called Buried. It was based in prison. And they had Lenny James in. Mm -hmm. uh, do you remember from Snatch, mm. the black guy who owns mm -hmm. jewelry shop? He's mm. he's very big now in America. He's massive, yeah. so uh, it was based around him. And they wanted some real life criminals, so they seen the art of crime, and they thought we want this lad. Yeah. So I'm like, but I'm not an actor. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they go, well, we want you in it, just be in it. Yeah. I thought, fair, fair enough. Yeah. They'll give me like five hundred pound a day yeah. in them days yeah. for doing nothing, you know. So I was in that. The one of BAFTA. There was this. Uh, there was, I was in four parts, I think it was six parts all together, and it was just bits and bobs. I had this big scene with, with Lenny, and it was like, we had two cameras on him, two on me, on top of me, yeah, and we have a, we have a, like, a verbal over some drugs, and I started fluffing my lines, didn't I? So I was like, oh, fuck yeah, you know what I mean? It looks easy on the, you know, <laughs> when you're watching it. And then uh, I remember him taking taking me to the side, because they, they looked up to me in the sense that because of, they knew. Yeah. This guy, no joke, you know, for, 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 uh, from his past. So he's like, he said, look, just say the lines, you'll be fine, mm. boom. And we did it. And um, and that that one of BAFTA, yeah. not my acting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, uh, Isn't it funny, though, you go in there, you get nicked for something, and then you're seen as like this celebrity. You come out, you're in GQ magazine, you're in all the different YouTube channels, you've got documentaries, they want to do a film on you. It's been Dodge, pretty surreal, right? It is, honestly, yeah. And... I'm not trying to glamorize it yet. It's just my life, yeah. Mm. You know, I, I've never chased it. You mm. know, I've been approached by these separate companies and stuff, and and I've done it. You know, and you know, I would. I mean, I want to give back. You yeah. know, I've got kids now. I've got seven kids. Dodge. Mm. Seven, Fair play, mate. <laughs> uh, yeah, seven kids. Yeah. Same woman. No, no, no. no, no. no. I've been How married, many women? Uh, I've been married five times. <laughs> Have you been married five times? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, mate. <laughs> Fair I know, play, I mate. Know, I know. And um, <laughs> so I've got kids. I've got I've got kids of three different okay. women, and 
And, you know, I like to say I've got a good relationship with my kids. Yeah. You know, I try, maybe not so the mums, but, mm. um, you know, I'm trying to be a good dad. Mm. And it's a learning game. You know mm. what I mean? You're always learning on that. Mm. Uh, my oldest, she's uh, 25. Mm. And uh, my youngest, um, he's um, 18 months. Mm. Do they all know your story? Obviously, the ones who are old enough to know. They, yeah. They must, yeah. Yeah, because, you know, I'm, I'm quite... In some ways, I'm quite well known in the mm. area that I am, and mm. yeah, they do. And you know, like uh, my son Adam, he gets approached here and there, and they're like, you know, your dad watches those. I think they've, uh, they worry because whenever they're out and about, they don't know who they're going to bump into. Yeah. He knows me, because um, yeah. I mean, I, I'll have it with anyone. Yeah. If you give me time, you're going to get it yeah. back. You yeah. know, I'm a people's person. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, the, um, I mean, they know, but obviously they know about it. You know, have you ever thought like? Even now, like we go, if we roll back about 40, 50 minutes ago, we're talking about how fraud now these days is a hell of a lot easier. You're seeing fraud everywhere where people get transferring money from bank account, bank account, bank account. Is it tempting for you? Dodge, you know what? I can't lie. It has been over the years, yeah. But what's always stopped me is I don't want to be that guy who keeps in and out of Nick. Yeah. I've got responsibilities. I've got kids. I've got a mother that I look after. Yeah. And that outweighs everything else, mm. you know. Um, so, so yeah, touch wood. I ain't going back. Mm. Sack, before we end up here, where can people find you? Right, so on Facebook, I'm uh, Saqib Mumtaz. YouTube as well. There's um, a few podcasts and interviews. Um, Instagram, it's Sacko1. And you can find me on TikTok as well. And uh, Twitter. Mm. Sack, I've uh, really enjoyed this chat. Really enjoyed it. Thanks for your honesty. Well, that's what it's about, isn't it? Yeah. It's, it's good therapy talking. Yeah, it is definitely to yeah. get it all out. But I really appreciate you making the effort coming down here to Bournemouth. And that's a long old trek for you. It is, mate. Yeah. It is. But um, some story, mate. That is some story and uh, fascinating. Thank you very much. Yeah. You're a good man. Cheers, Zach. Cheers. Cheers, mate.